Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar at Pitts Library. Uh, this webinar is about accessing alumni resources. So we are going to show you uh, how you can access some of the online resources that are available to you as a Candler and an Emory alum. And then we're going to talk a little bit about your borrowing privileges and other uh, sort of physical resources that are available to you uh, at Pitts Library. My name is Brady Beard. I'm the reference and instruction librarian here at Pitts and my colleague, Anne-Marie McLean, who is a reference librarian as well as our outreach coordinator uh, is here as well. Before we get started, I just wanna give you a really quick overview about the Big Marker uh, hosting site. You'll see uh, along the right-hand side of your screen that you have a chat, Q&A, polls, and handouts. Uh, section. Feel free to go ahead and use chat and Q&A to ask Anne-Marie and myself questions throughout the webinar. We're going to hold those until we're all done, and then we'll sort of uh, address as many as we can at the end of our time together today. Uh, you'll see polls. They'll be posted sort of throughout the webinar. They have questions that relate to the things on the slides. This is an opportunity um, for you to help us know what alumni are looking for, what sorts of resources you want to see, but also to be a reminder to you of the sorts of things that we're talking about today. And then all of the slides are in the handouts section of our webinar. And you can go ahead and download these. All of the relevant links are hyperlinked throughout. So uh, you can just want, click on that handout and go directly to the alumni page or email us or whatever you need. Um, and finally, you can always feel free to email us at theologyref at emory.edu. And that email address will show up at the end of our webinar. Uh, but let's get started. So the first thing you should know about setting up your alumni account as an alum of Candler is that you actually need uh, to do that. The way to set up your account is to go to alumni.emory.edu and you'll put in all of your information uh, and this will give you access to the online resources that are available to you. Uh, the important thing to remember here, especially if you're a more recent alum or are planning on graduating and becoming an alum this spring, is that you'll want to use an email address that's not your Emory email. The Emory email will expire after a certain amount of time. So this is a good time to use one of your personal email addresses or to create a Gmail or something like that purely for uh, accessing these resources. I'll show you um, how to set up your account uh, in just a moment. Finally, a quick word about what sorts of online databases are available to you. You'll see a relevant list here on this slide. There are more uh, databases that you can get access to from the university, but these are the ones that we think are sort of most relevant to Candler alums. So you'll notice Academic Search Premier for alumni, ATLA, which you're probably all very familiar with using from your time at Candler, uh, Credo Reference, which is one of my favorite um, resources. This might be new to you, but I'll show you uh, how to navigate it very uh, quickly. The Encyclopedia of the Bible and its Reception is a new resource that we've just acquired for alumni, so we're very excited about it. And then, of course, one we get asked about all the time is the Hermeneia Commentary Series. The important thing to remember about these online resources is that you can't actually access them through the normal discovery or the pits.emory.edu website that you might be used to. To get to these things, you actually have to go through the alumni website, which is why you need to set up your alumni account. And I'll show you how to do that. Once your account is set up and you get your password and everything else ready to go, it's really pretty simple. Uh, so let's take a look at how to set up your account and then how to access the materials, um, the online resources that you might be looking for. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the alumni.emory.edu website. And this website is sort of the hub of all of the Emory alum resources that are available. You'll see lots of different information um, on that uh, page. But what's most important to you is to go to benefits and then drop down here to online research, uh, online library research databases. 
you'll click this tab and it will take you to a page that looks like this that shows you all of the sorts of resources that are available to you. Uh, importantly, you'll see uh, some annotations for the many different types of databases that are available. Again, not all of these are relevant, uh, of course, to people during their time at Candler, but uh, the ones that are, we've sort of pulled out for you in the slide. So things to look out for are the ATLA database for alumni, Credo Reference, the Encyclopedia of the Bible and its Reception, and so on. To set up your alumni account, you're going to just select this big blue button that says sign in to access the premium resources listed below. When you select this button, you're going to sign in as a new user or go to the new user setup button. Then they'll ask you for your name and your last name and match you with your name in their records. Once you select your name in their records, you'll enter all of your confirmation email, your current uh, address, phone number and email and things like that and then you'll be ready to go. Once you're ready to go, you simply have to select that blue button again to sign in. It will prompt you after you sign in to confirm all of your information one more time. Uh, and it will do this every time you log in. It gets to be a, a little tiresome after a while, but it's all for the purpose of making sure that your information stays current in our system. So you'll see your name, your email, and your city of residence every time you log in, and you'll just confirm that that's who you are. Once you do that, you'll be taken to this research database page with all of these links to all of the different databases that are available to you. Um, so you just keep scrolling, they're alphabetical, ATLA, Credo, Hermeneia, Oxford Biblical Studies. The thing to watch out for with the Oxford Biblical Studies is it doesn't actually automatically log you into that database. Instead, it takes you to the home page, and then you'll use this username and password to log in. But if you were to click on ATLA database for alumni, this is what you'll see. And it looks a lot like um, ATLA or just like ATLA that you used as, uh, as an enrolled student at Candler. This is uh, a slightly different version of ATLA than what you used as a student, but um, it still contains a large majority of those resources that you're used to using uh, and operates much the same way. So you can, of course, type in, uh, any sort of search word or search phrase that you're interested in searching, or use the scripture index up here at the top and get down into the relevant uh, essays or articles on the biblical topic that you're looking for. Likewise, if we run a keyword search, it'll take us right to all of the relevant materials. And then you can opt for full text, scholarly or peer reviewed journals, those things that are open access and allow you to select the language that you're looking for and even the publication date. So uh, this is a really wonderful tool and we hope you all continue to use it as, as alumni of Candler. Credo Reference is another one of my favorite um, tools to use. It's a broad reference collection, and so you're going to find all sorts of things relevant, not only to the study of theology and religion, but across the board. Um, and one of my favorite things about it is that it includes many different um, Cambri uh, companion books or um, other sorts of collections of, of uh, secondary, what we call secondary research um, and tertiary research materials. So you'll find things like the Cambridge Companions to all sorts of subjects in here, or the Wiley Com Blackwell Companion to World Christianity, for instance. So if we just search World Christianity, here we see all of the sort of um, relevant materials to our keyword search show up, and we can select whichever one we want. But then it also links us to that full item within the Cradle Reference Collection. So if I wanted to take a closer look at the Wiley Blackwell Companion to World Christianity, I can select that link. And it actually takes me to all of the essays that are uh, published in this volume. Uh, so this is another really fantastic resource that is uh, one that I think is underused um, because most of the time we're used to using these sorts of things physically, uh, reference collections physically, but uh, we can use it online at Credo Reference. The Encyclopedia of the Bible and its Reception, like I mentioned earlier, is one of our newest resources and we're really excited about it. Uh, this resource is 
really fantastic. If you are familiar with it, you know that they are continuing to publish this uh, series of volumes right now. This encyclopedia, I think it's up to 14 or 15 volumes, and they're only about halfway through the alphabet. So when it's all said and done, it will be quite an expansive collection. And once you get into the Encyclopedia of Bibli uh, the Bible and its Reception, you can search the publication for keyword, or you can jump through their entries um, alphabetically. So if you're interested in how Abel was, um, has been thought about in the church and in the community uh, of believers, you can simply get into this information and, um, and find more uh, subject matter there. Project Muse is a great place to go for uh, ebooks and articles that are available to you as an alum. Most ebooks are unfortunately not available to alumni for a variety of reasons, but Project Muse is available. And so if you are looking for an ebook, um, this would be the place to go um, to, to find that. And again, you can search by keyword subject. Here I just searched gospel, and it pulls um, anything related to books or articles that have the word gospel in it. And then finally, our last um, sort of online resource is not available through PITS, but we do make available to you a special purchase price, which is 33% off of the normal price. And that is for a subscription to ministrymatters.com. Uh, Ministry Matters is a really wonderful resource for uh, worship planning and um, sermon prep, but they also have a really wonderful reference library, including uh, that includes things like the New Interpreter's Bible Dictionary, the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary Series, um, the Abingdon Bible Commentary Series, uh, and lots of the works of John Wesley, uh, all sorts of works that will likely be relevant to your work. This um, this is this annual subscription is in the sort of broad scheme of things really affordable considering the amount of materials that you get, and it is ninety nine ninety nine annually or it's $9.99 monthly. And so we hope that you'll make use of this, this special arrangement between Pitt's library and um, Ministry Matters. With that, um, that's the last of the sort of databases that I wanna show you. I know I ran through them really quickly. Feel free to ask questions in the Q&A and we'll answer them towards the end of our time together. But for now, I'm going to go back to our slides and turn it over to uh, Anne-Marie and she is going to tell you a little bit more about your borrowing privileges at Pitts, how to get a library card, and all sorts of other resources that are available to you, including events. Fantastic, thank you very much, Brady. Um, so hopefully everyone is still seeing these slides. Um, like Brady said, my name is Anne Marie, if you don't already know me. I'm the library's reference and outreach coordinator. So part of my job is providing research and instruction help in addition to reaching out to folks just like yourselves to make sure that all our different communities know about our resources and services. Another one of those services for alumni in particular is your general borrowing privileges. So good news, you can still check out books from Emory Libraries after you graduate. I'd ask for a round of applause, but we can't do that right now. So for this portion of the webinar, I'm gonna walk you through what you can do regarding circulating and physical collections when the library and all of campus is under normal operations. Do always remember to check pits.emory.edu for updates on open hours and on closings. So as you can see here, your borrowing privileges as an Emory alum allow you to first check out up to 25 books at one time at Pitts. In addition to that, you can also check out up to 25 items from the Woodruff Library, that big scary building across the quad that I encourage you all to go visit nonetheless. Um, so that brings your total borrowing limit to 50 books on loan at one time. You'll also be able to manage your loans online just as you would a student, which I will explain in more detail in just a moment. Before I do that, let's start with the very first step of setting up your account. If you would like to take advantage of your borrowing privileges of physical items as an alum, it's going to be best if you, one, live in Atlanta or the greater Atlanta area, 
or two if you plan to make interspersed visits to campus. This is because you will actually need to visit buildings on campus to set up your account. And of course, to actually check out the books from the library. We don't provide any mailing services for these accounts, unfortunately. Before you can set up your alumni account at Pitts in the library, you will need to obtain an Emory alumni card. You can do this in one of two ways. One, you can visit Emory Card Services, everyone's favorite place, on the bottom level of the B. Jones Center on campus, which is pictured right here. If any of you guys don't remember or a bit hazy, it's that building that's adjacent to the Barnes & Noble building where you probably got a lot of coffee as a student. You can also register for the card online at engage.emory.edu, and then you'll have to visit the Emory Card Services to actually activate it and get your photo taken. So either way, you're going to have to go to the B. Jones building. One quick note, your Emory ID will not be accepted for setting up your new library account, your current Emory ID. Put that in a scrapbook, put it somewhere else, but you cannot use it to get your alumni privileges. Neither will other forms of ID like a driver's license or passport. So get that Emory alumni ID, please. The good news about getting that alumni ID, I will mention, is that it not only gets you library privileges, but also other benefits like discounts on continuing education courses, um, discounts on membership at the Carlos Museum, and even discounted tickets to theater, dance, and musical performances through Arts at Emory. I will say alums don't, unfortunately don't receive discounts on campus parking or parking ticket validations when you're attending those things. So obviously it goes without saying that your Emory alumni card is an important part of setting up your alumni benefits. Let's do a quick poll to make sure everyone knows how and where to get this card. Let's take a look at what we've got. And as you all remember and can see here, it is indeed that B. Jones building. You cannot get the actual card through Pitts or through Woodruff. So moving right along, managing your account. So after you've procured your Emory alumni ID, then you're going to go to Pitts Theology Library, which is on level two of the Rita Ann Rollins building, otherwise known as Candler. At the circulation desk on the main entry level of the library, you will present your Emory alumni ID, and then you're going to work with an account specialist to set up your account. To do so, you will need to provide a current email address that you check regularly. Like Brady said, we don't suggest you use your Emory email address because that is going to expire based on your graduation date, either in mid-September or mid-May. If you're curious about what else expires, you can visit it.emory.edu. Um, they have FAQs on all of that fun stuff. To set up your account, you'll also need a mailing address in addition to a phone number. The circulation staff member will assign you an affiliate ID and explain how and where to log into your account as an affiliate, in addition to setting up your password. You'll manage your account, just as you were when you were a student, by logging in at discovery.emory.edu, just as an affiliate and not as a main Emory user. As you can see, managing your account online includes viewing items you have on loan, renewing items if you want to keep them beyond your 28-day loan period, requesting items that are checked out by another user, also known as the recall system, and viewing any current fines or blocks you might have on your account. If you run into trouble or questions regarding any of these processes or policies, you can always visit pitts.emory.edu slash alums or you can contact the circulation staff at theologycirc at emory.edu or call 404-727-4166. That's also on our website if you don't remember. While you do get all of these lovely benefits that Brady and I have just discussed, there are a few services that are only available to current Emory students, faculty, and staff that you won't be able to continue using post-graduation. These include, one, accessing anything listed as an online resource or ebook in the Discover e catalog. These are licensed specifically for Emory users only. 
All of your online resources you can access remotely will be through the Emory Alumni Association Online Databases page that Brady showed you just earlier. You also unfortunately cannot use interlibrary loan or electronic document delivery. This means requesting scans of physical items or requesting that Emory borrow items on your behalf from another institution. Alternatively, we do just suggest exploring ILL services through your public library. Many of them will do that for a very small charge or for free. But we're gonna end on a more positive note. There are a few more services and resources that we want you guys as alums to know about, especially after you graduate. So one, visiting the building during normal operations. If you visit the building, you can one, use all of our non-circulating items on site. For example, periodicals, reference works, those lovely ready reference things that you see in the very front. A reminder that you can still scan anything to your email or thumb drive for free. We encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, you can also use the library as a quiet study space. You can get research help from reference librarians um, in normal operations. This will be Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also even do so remotely at pitts.emory.edu slash ask. In addition, we encourage you to look at our research guides that you might have used during your career at Candler. Um, these have over 66 topics, many offer open access resources, and they're all online at pitts.emory.edu slash guides. You can also attend events. For example, Reformation Day, one of the library's biggest annual events. Um, this will allow you to fellowship with the Candler community, get updates on new library acquisitions, attend lectures by renowned scholars, and we also have even more learning opportunities like weekly workshops, which you can still attend as an alum. For more information on those registering and what they're about, you can visit pitts.emory.edu slash WW. And like Brady said, all of these are linked in those slides, so you don't have to remember all these URLs I'm throwing at you. Uh, finally, you can still follow us online for updates about services, acquisitions, events, staff, um, and even more, you can do that at the Pitts Prospectus email list. So you can register for that at pitts.emory.edu slash prospectus. Um, that's gonna give you updates about all of those items. In addition, you can get updates on the things you guys log into every day. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the library has accounts for all of those. Um, we have a blog on the front page of our website. And we also will submit entries to the Candler Alumni Newsletter. So pay attention for those. All right, that was a lot of information to throw at you, I know. Um, to make sure everyone is on the same page, I'm gonna do a quick poll about what services alumni still can use after graduation. You can check all that apply, borrowing privileges, weekly workshops, interlibrary loan, research consultations. I'd play the Jeopardy song if I had one. And the answer is you can do all of those things except for interlibrary loan. Visit your public library to do that. So this brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, we're going to open up things for questions and answers in that Q&A tab that you see there. Um, you can always remember to contact us afterwards if you don't have questions now at Theology Ref, um, at pitts.emory.edu slash ask, at the phone number, wherever. We want to hear from you and hear what you guys are doing now that you have your degrees and going out into the world. So I'll let Brady sort of moderate our question and answers at this point. Feel free to submit a question to the Q&A tab if you have one. Um, we've had a few come in during the course of the webinar and a few of them had to do with where to set up your online uh, account in the first place. So I'll just overview that very quickly. The first step, is to go to the alumni.emory.edu page. From there, you'll go to the benefits drop-down menu, then select online library research databases, and then click the big blue button here that says sign in to access the premium resources listed below. Once you do that, you'll be prompted to sign in as a new user, and that's where you'll confirm all of your information and match your name with the name that the university has on record from your time as a student. Other questions that came up included where to go to get the special deal for 33% off of Ministry Matters. And the answer to that is that you'll just go to ministrymatters.com slash alumni slash Emory, and then select whichever 
um, a subscription type you want, and they will prompt you to proceed to the checkout and create an account and plug in your um, information there, your email and password for the Ministry Matters site. Otherwise, um, we had questions about when can you sign up for alumni resources? And what, the answer to that question is anytime after you graduate, you can feel free to sign up as an alum. If you are a current student and you're looking to graduate this um, spring, go ahead and wait until after final papers and finals are due uh, so that you maintain your, uh, your current student uh, identification in the library system. But as soon as the semester is done, feel free to get started on setting up your alumni account. A couple of questions have come in about um, when the campus will be open again. Uh, at the time of this recording, of course, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we don't know when campus will be open again at this time, but you can feel free to set up your online account and start using all of those online resources right now. And then keep an eye on our website and sign up for the Pitts Prospectus email. And that's where you'll find information about when the library is open again. You don't have to have, a, here's a question about whether or not you need an alumni card in order to get access to the online resources. And the answer to that is no. Um, you will set up your online account um, at the alumni.emory.edu website, and you can get started using those things right away. Once you graduate, there's a question here about graduating this year uh, in the spring and then accessing privileges um, and when those change. Those will change at some point this summer. I don't know the precise date on up, off the top of my head, um, but you can email us at theologyref, dot, at, theologyref at emory edu and we can give you um, that information if that's relevant to your situation. Yes, when you um, log in to Discovery, uh, you will use the affiliate account. So someone is asking, um, is the Discovery affiliate account the same as the database account? Um, those are two slightly different accounts. Um, remember, all of the online resources that are available to alumni, you must access through the alumni resources website. You can't access those through Discovery. The Discovery affiliate account is how you maintain and manage your physical uh, items that you have checked out. So if you have books or you want to recall an item, then you will use the Discovery affiliate account. I think we'll end there. And I just once again want to thank you all so much for joining us today and for your participation in this webinar. I hope it was helpful. Remember, you can download the slides from the handouts tab in the chat bar. This webinar has been recorded and you will get an email once it is posted and you can watch it as many times as you want um, to refresh your memory. We'll also post it to our main library page and so you will be able to find it that way. If you have any additional questions, feel free to email us at theologyref at emory.edu. One final question that's just come in that's really important and I'll answer here is how do we subscribe to the PITS emails? You can subscribe to the PITS emails by clicking the PITS Prospectus hyperlink in these slides. So if you download them, go to the slide that mentions PITS Prospectus, click the hyperlink, it will take you right to the page where you can uh, sign up for those emails. Thank you all again for joining us and uh, have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.